Hey, Mark, welcome to the Modern Marketing Podcast. Super excited to have you on here, my friend. Adam Earhart, always a pleasure to see you, my friend. Yeah, it's great to be back here. We're going to have hopefully some video going, but if not, and people are just listening to the audio, they should know that I am standing based on your recommendation to not be sitting so much, and you are walking on one of the snazziest treadmill desks that I have seen. Yeah, I mean, I you know I know it's annoying because I keep saying it, but sitting's the new smoking. Yeah, well, so. It's, yeah. it's funny. I mean, if it's worth saying, right? I mean, it's going to need a bit of repeating. I'm going to probably need to hear that a few times. So I've got even a little reminder that kind of dings and reminds me to stand up and stretch because, you know, when you kind of get in the zone and then you look down, you're like, oh, man, I've been sitting here for hours. Oh, yeah. I mean, the thing is, like, I used to stand, but it hurt my feet. So walking actually feels better for me. And it's not like I'm walking fast. I'm going like 1.1 mile per hour. Yeah. But, you know, I'll get my 15,000 steps in before noon. There you go. So you got to get the Fitbit and start the competitions. You'd be dominating. Yeah, no, I have it. I, I, and I dominate. It's great. Yeah, yeah no kidding. Yeah. I even saw, it's funny, after we were talking about that last time, I found a, a, what do you call it, a stationary bike that has a desk with it. And I was like, I wonder if this is a good compromise. But uh, it looked kind of a, like a crazy contraption. So we shall see. Yeah. Yeah, my wife thinks I'm nuts. Hey, hey well, you're going to yeah. live to a million, right? So it'll all be worth it. Yeah, yeah, let's hope. Yeah, let's so hope. maybe you can tell, I gave you a bit of an intro here before we dived in uh, to the interview, but maybe you can tell the listeners a little bit about yourself, a little bit about the business and uh, and where you are today. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, I'm a professional land investor. I've done over 5,200 land flips since 2001. And I am the land geek. So, you know, the the way I got into this was... Um, before I'd never done any kind of land investing, um, or real estate investing for that matter. And I'm, I was wor working as an investment banker doing mergers and acquisitions with private equity groups, you know, mid market M and a five to 500 million enterprise value, nothing crazy. And I was miserable. I had a 45 minute commute to work and back. I was micromanaged. I had no control and I hated it. So I wouldn't get the. Sunday blues anticipating yeah. Monday coming around. I'd get the Friday blues yeah. anticipating the weekend going by really fast and being at work on Monday. Yeah. So my farm, my firm hires this guy and he's telling me that on the side, he's going to tax deed auctions. He's buying up raw land for pennies on the dollar and he's flipping them online and he's making 300% returns on his investment. Well, Adam, I'm looking at companies all day. It made a great company, a great company has 15% EBITDA margins or higher, right? Free cash flow, 15%. Mm -hmm. Your average company is at 10%, and I'm looking at companies all day long, less than 10%. So I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. I'm from the show me state. I don't believe him. Yeah. So I've got like three grand saved up for car repairs. I go to the middle of like nowhere, New Mexico. I buy up 10 half acre parcels uh, at an average price of 300 bucks, yeah. like $300 each. Yeah. I sold them online the next week for an average price of over $1,200. Crazy. And it worked. So I went to another auction in Arizona. Nobody's in the room. Again, this is 2000. Yeah. And on that next auction, I, I reinvested all that money. I made over $90,000 on that next auction. Crazy. So I go to my wife. I say, honey, I'm going to quit my job. And I'm going to invest in land full time. And she said, absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> so I said, fine, fine, fine. So I did it part time on the side is my side hustle for 18 months and it took 18 months for the land investing income to exceed the investment banking income and i've been doing it full time ever since cool. and now with software and automation and delegation i i work two hours a week in frontier properties and um you know take that tim ferris yeah that's uh, it. I, I, I love get, it i'll be waiting for the new book the uh, the two hour work week yeah, I, yeah, I, you know what? I am writing that book. Oh, you I, I, I wrote a book. I call it Dirt Rich. Yeah, oh, yeah that's good. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, excellent. So, well, that's fantastic. I mean, it's interesting to hear, like, were you taking these properties even back in 2001 and selling them online back then? I was. Okay, I was. right on. So what was the yeah. kind of the transition? I mean, obviously, uh, that's sort of, I guess, the, the area that I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to head down that road there. But uh, like, what was the transition for that? Because that's, that's fantastic. Like, how were you able to buy a piece of land in New Mexico for a few hundred bucks, put it up online back in early 2000s, um, and then sell it? So you know, my main marketing channel at that time, it's not that today, mm -hmm. but at that time was a little website called eBay. Okay. Yeah. 
I'm and, sure. I'm sure people have heard. Yeah, I mean, it was crazy. And so you'd start the, the auction at a dollar, and it'd get bid up. And you know, it's not that people wanted the raw land; they wanted to win. Yeah, yeah. And it was like a thing. It was crazy. And I, I did that for years. That's fantastic. That's actually, that's incredibly interesting. Cause yeah, eBay, I mean, you always think about it for all these other products. You never think about land, but I really like the fact that, uh, yeah, you play on the competitive nature of people. And especially when you've got that kind of open forum where people can see, oh man, I'm going to lose this sweet piece of land in New Mexico in the middle of the desert. If I don't, uh, if I don't get my card in. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. And it, you know, it, it's funny because most people, when they think raw land, they think million dollar tracks. They think, you know, you know, Warren Buffett, Ted mm-hmm. Turner, you know, this is the, the playground of billionaires mm-hmm. that buy raw land and to buy a piece of land for, you know, for like nothing is, is seemed, you know, like it, it was just literally the pricing of it was irresistible. Yeah. And then that's still the secret of, of our model today is really buying these assets right and making it irresistible yeah. for your customer and, and making it like a car payment. So now I have all this passive income coming in, but I don't have to deal with tenants, termites, toilets, or trash because I'm not dealing with any, any tenant or any renters. Yeah. I don't have to deal with Dodd-Frank or RESPA or the SAFE Act, any kind of onerous real estate legislation. Um, I shuffle paper and I make money. It's amazing. Yeah, perfect, perfect. So let's talk about how to make it irresistible because I think that's fantastic. When you're looking at, I mean, raw land is probably the epitome of like the marketing project because I mean, you've got something here that's just dirt and rocks and maybe some grass, might have a hill, uh, maybe a tree if you're lucky there. But like, how do you package this, uh, something that nobody else saw value in and then put a spin on it in order to get top dollar for it? You know, you know, so the best buyer, we have a built-in best buyer, and it's the neighbors. Mm-hmm. So the first thing we do is we go to the neighbors, yeah. and we send out neighbor letters saying, hey, before we go to the open market on this property, you know, protect your view, expand your, you know, your holdings, right, and, and do it. So a lot of times the, the neighbors will just buy it up. But if they pass on it, we actually build up a buyer's list online. So we're educating our buyers on the value of owning and investing in raw land. And we're targeting the people that already tell themselves the story. Oh, here's an asset that lasts forever. Mm -hmm. Right. Maybe they are um, nostalgic for a a simpler time when they would go to the country and they would see meet their see their grandparents and, you know, get out of the city. Or maybe they're a prepper. Right. Somebody who's hoping for the best, preparing for the worst. They need a place to bug out to. Maybe they're recreationally inclined and they want somewhere they can go hunt or fish or tent um, and not have to deal with anything. So there's this really huge market out there of people that are potentially really good land investors. But the way that we price it makes it really special because we can get our money out of the down payment and then finance it at a car payment. 249, 349, 449, you know, 799 a month at really, you know, easy interest rates Mm -hmm. and automate it through software. Yeah. Excellent. So there's a couple points here. I think that that really, it sounds like obviously, you know, uh, you know who you're trying to reach to, which there's a couple points here. Number one is, you know, your customer avatar. It sounds like like just spot on. These are the people that like to buy land and we've got a list. And I think the other thing that's absolutely genius is you're you're kind of preaching to the choir. So you're going to the people that already get it rather than trying to go out there and educate someone about like, look, this is raw land. You can buy it. Here are the values. You're kind of going to the people that already, hey, look, I already know this is valuable. Let me learn just how I do it or what to do it or whatnot, which cuts your marketing costs and probably just jacks your results right up. So yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, we, we, I don't want to be in the convincing business yeah. at all. Yeah. That's good. I like that. Yeah, that's, that's one of my biggest things is people so often, especially when you're talking to them, you say, well, who, who's your market? And they're like, well, everybody. And of course, of course, it's not right. You're going you're gonna to spend a fortune trying to get everybody uh, when the vast majority are wrong. Oh, it's, it's so funny. I love that Dan Kennedy quote where if you're not in, you know, uh, offending someone by noon, you're not working hard enough. Yeah, 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 that's right. Well, it's just as important, right? You want to find your people and you want to tell your people that are not your people that you are not their people. So that's yeah, yeah. 
That's excellent. So you started with eBay. That was obviously a fantastic channel. Obviously it evolved. Uh, so where, what was kind of the transition and where is it at today? Like what are the... So, so today it's funny because you probably never heard of this little website. It's the 10th most trafficked website in the United States called Craigslist. Craigslist. Yeah, I'm sure people yeah. have heard of that one too. And so with Craigslist, what's interesting about Craigslist and their algorithm is there's all these little services and we're able to post 124 ads with a touch of a button hmm. using software. Hmm. So we can dominate the Craigslist space and not get our, our ads ghosted, they stick. Mm -hmm. And we do all these little geeky things mm -hmm. to make that happen. Now, today, there's another little platform you've probably never heard of <laughs> yeah. that have buy sell groups that are competing with Craigslist, also free to list, called Facebook. Facebook. I am slightly familiar. Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, so these are, you know, these, these esoteric websites that, yeah. you know, only the, the cool kids are That's playing. That's right. On I days. know. We're not going to let anybody listen to this episode. You're going to have to have to pass through the cool kid club. So. Right. Right. All, all these secrets. Yeah. But it's, but it is effective mm -hmm. and it does work. And again, the costs of marketing are so low yeah. and you can target so well on Facebook. Um, there's no reason, like there's other, there's other sites that are paid. Mm -hmm. You can go to landsofamerica.com, landandfarm.com, landflip.com, landhub.com, there's a lands, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and so, you know, we used to always advertise on there, but then we'd look at our, the Pareto principle, like, you know, 20% of our marketing efforts on these two platforms yield 80% of our sales. Yeah. So why are we just focusing on that? Totally. And that's, that's absolutely genius. I think that's, that's, in fact, that is a huge take home point. Maybe we'll insert like a ringing bell or something here, because I mean, that is, that is huge. That Pareto principle of finding like what's, so, what so often happens is people will take a look, well, we need to do digital. We need to do some radio and some newspaper and we need to do direct mail. We need to do cold calling and networking. And if they really kind of listed it out and boiled it down, all right, where are our results coming from? You could be able to cut like 80% of your marketing and really focus in on what's working, make your life easier, get better results, save yourself money, connect with your customers, on and on. Yeah, that's that's brilliant. So when we're talking about Facebook, because that is a hot topic and uh, and very dear, uh, very near and dear to my heart, what is the process of it? Are you just putting up an ad, sending them to a landing page? Are they going to a website specifically for that piece of property? Is it running through a company? I mean, we have we have a a, a fairly standardized process. Of, of posting and what we'll do is we'll use a, a company like our a scheduler kind of software let's say like a meetedgar.com or yeah. coschedule.com and what we want are I mean it's gonna sound a little crass mm -hmm. but we want the toilet sitters mm -hmm. so we want our ad up at around 2 in the morning 3 in the morning huh. those people who wake up nature calls and of course they're all addicted to their phones they bring their <laughs> phone in and they start going through their their Facebook. What's the first ad they see up there? My ad. Yeah. Right. So I want to be first before it gets real busy during the day when everybody else is posting. Yeah. So we we you know we auto post through these software channels, um, doing that, mm -hmm. and then we want to be super aggressive with responding. Mm -hmm. Right. So the day of hey I will call you back. That's not going to work on uh, Messenger. Yeah. Right. So we have our our acquisition manager, you know, on on Facebook Messenger and responding in 10 seconds or less. Yeah. It doesn't doesn't mean that they're going to necessarily close the deal in 10 seconds or less, but they want to respond. They want to, you know, start preparing for that phone conversation because the secret of making money online is the phone. Hmm. It, it definitely is. So we want to get them we want to get them talking, finding out exactly what was it about that property that, you know, spurred their interest. Um, and then how can we help them invest in that property? Is this the right property for you to invest in, right? Based on your needs. So we really want to focus on the customer. Yeah. That's, that is such an insightful comment there, Mark. The secret of making money online is the phone. Cause that's, it's, you know, it's funny. I've never heard anyone articulate it. They've never said it, but it's something that we've known. Again, this actually, this might be a little secret that we're letting out of the bag. Cause so many people are attracted to the online business for the sort of the anon and anonymity of it. The fact that we don't actually have to talk to anyone or we don't have to, we can hide behind our screens, but 
But for those that are willing to sort of get on the phone, to have that conversation, to make that in-person meeting or whatnot, yeah, to the uh, to them seems to go the biggest rewards. And that's absolutely what I've seen in uh, with my business, with my colleagues, my in my masterminds, all of us that seem to be kind of getting on the phone or, or for those with larger businesses have their sales team contacting people. So yeah, crucial and, uh, and can be scary. How did you sort of figure that out? Was that kind of, because that's not, I mean, that's kind of a hidden gem for a lot of people. Not a lot of people know the value of the phone. Yeah, so I think one of my greatest strengths, Adam, is that I know I don't know anything. I'm certain of uncertainty. Yeah. Right? So knowing that I don't know anything, I'm really constantly listening to podcasts like yours, reading books, um, you know, taking courses and educating myself. And then all of a sudden... I heard, I don't even, maybe it was Seth Godin who said mm. it. Like somebody I respected in marketing, you know, said that yeah. phrase. Certainly wasn't me. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that makes sense. And, you know, if you're not selling a $7 ebook, yeah. right, you've got to talk to people. You have to ask them the right questions so you know who your target customer is to even create that avatar like you talked about in the very beginning of the podcast yeah if you don't know who your avatar is you don't know what keeps them up at two in the morning yeah you can't message them you can't target them properly and then you're just out of the gate kind of just you know in the dark yeah yeah for sure i mean absolutely i mean we can put up surveys all day long but what uh i forget who it was that recommended i think it might have been rick mulready who said uh, he gained more insight by just calling his customers in a few days than he did with months of surveys and looking through responses and back to emails. Yeah, there's no substitute, no second place for actually having that conversation and figuring out someone's hopes and fears and dreams and, and how to fix that for them. Yeah, and then my, my favorite customer calls, are, is, funnily enough, are, are the haters, right. right? The people who really just come out of the gate surly. Yeah. But... They are a gift because they tell you, they just cut right to the chase. They don't care about your feelings. Yeah. They don't care how hard you've been working. <laughs> they don't care, right? And they just cut, like, this is what you're doing wrong, yeah. right? And so once you get over the initial sting, you're like, oh, what a gift. You're helping me. Yeah. And then you go and you, you make that little tweak. And they love the fact that, you know, they were totally jerky to you and you were, like, willing to, to listen to them. Yeah. And they're like, now you turn them around and, and then they become like your best customers, your greatest advocates. Yeah, for sure. I think there's a couple of things there. First of all, they, these are the type of people that want to be heard. Uh, they probably don't feel heard. So when they get a chance to voice their opinion and you're actually listening and, and taking it in. And the second thing is they've probably got opinions that lots of other people have as well. But they're actually kind of the ones that are going to come out and just say it to your face rather than either just click close or next or close the ad or keep scrolling on their news feed past at two in the morning, sitting wherever they're sitting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one of my favorite books is uh, Hug Your Haters by Jay Bear. Have you read that? I haven't, but I'm going to now. Oh, you got to read Bear. it. Yeah, and, and he's got like a little rule that says, you know, um, only respond twice. Because right. you could spend all day arguing with somebody on Twitter. Yeah. If you, if you you know. But really, it's, it's, it's a marketing channel. So if somebody puts something on Facebook about one of my online ads, this is a mm. scam, don't buy it, this is, you know, swampland. That's an opportunity for me to not answer the hater, it's the opportunity to answer the market. Yeah. Thank you, thank you for your comment. Um, I'd like to educate you on why this is not a scam, right? Yeah. And here it is, right? We've been in business for over 16 years. We're an A-plus BBB rated company. If you yeah. go here, you can see our testimonials. If you check out this plat map, you can see this property clearly is not underwater. And if you look yeah. at the GPS coordinates here, you can see clearly on Google Earth, this is a beautiful piece of property, excellent access, you know, mountain views. Thank you again for your comment. That's fantastic. I love that. But now we're marketing. Now we're making that person look like a lunatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. Oh, yeah. that's, that's perfect. That's in fact, that's great. I've got a couple uh, friends in the industry that uh, they actually will go back. Now they, there's obviously conflicting opinions on this, so I won't give their name, but they will, um, they'll kind of go back and troll the hater. So they'll like go to their 
profiles, they'll find their info, they'll, I mean, they'll have this full-blown conversation out with them and they're able to do it quite comedically so it, it works for them, but uh, I've, I don't have that, that tact or grace so I have to pass, but that's actually, that's going to lead us nicely because anytime we're running Facebook ads for a client, one of their biggest things is those negative comments. So typically we give ownership of the comments to the company, but they're always looking for feedback on how to handle it. And the kind of the knee jerk reaction is to just delete everything. Everything. everything gets deleted and then what ends up happening is you kind of never get a chance to respond to objections so what's up I mean I absolutely love that of, of going back and kind of addressing it can you maybe riff on that a bit more yeah I mean so the rule is you address it twice yeah and then you stop so you don't want to continue like you know obviously if they say in and and you have to like they have to have a legitimate gripe it can't be Adam you're a jerk. I hate your glasses. Yeah. It has nothing to do with the actual ad. Yeah. That you can ignore. Yeah. Right. But if they have something that, that you can actually respond to where they say, Hey, your property sucks. Right. Yeah. Um, and I hate your glasses. Yeah. <laughs> then we can say, I'm so sorry. You don't like the looks of me, but let me talk about the property. <laughs> yeah. Right. And yeah. then you list like, cause now you're marketing to all these people that are reading the comments. Yeah. Then they comment again. I think you're a total ripoff artist. Right. right. Thanks again for the comment. I'd like to address that because yeah. it could be a, a common concern. And if you go to this page here, here's where our testimonials are. Here's our link to our BBB webpage. And again, we've been doing this a long time. Mm -hmm. um, over 5,200 happy transactions. We have a simple business philosophy. Happy customers guaranteed. Have a great day. Then yeah. they respond again, and yeah. then you just ignore. Right, right, perfect. Yeah, I think that's fantastic. That that's really good advice. Two two responses as nice as you can, and don't uh, don't forget to use it as a marketing opportunity. You're you're getting an option or an opportunity here to kind of not only overcome some objections, but also rumor may have it that you're going to lower your cost per click because you're getting greater engagement with your ad, and the more comments and the more kind of stuff you can get up there, the more people are going to see it, the less it's going to cost you. It's yeah, it's kind of a win-win situation. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, clearly um, your initial instinct is to like just ignore, but I think you, I think you are missing that opportunity to market. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So we've got Craigslist, we've got some Facebook ads running. Is that where the business is kind of at right now? Those are the main marketing channels for, for yourself and for your students. Well, no. I mean, the two best marketing channels are the neighbors and right. your email list, right? So I can't control Craigslist. Right. I can't control Facebook. Facebook. They could change their algorithms tomorrow. The only thing I do own is that email address where the person opts in for the three fatal land buying mistakes. Yeah. And then that gives me permission to continue to email them once a week, a deal of the week. Awesome. So that is the, really the most valuable marketing asset I have is that email address. Fantastic. That's such a good thing. So this this might be a rhetorical and kind of a loaded question. Would you say that everyone should probably have an email list in their business? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good answer. Good answer. Yes. Yeah. That, that that's fantastic, right? I mean, we've we've talked about it before. We're going to talk about it again. It's not going away anytime soon. People still habitually, addictively check their email. Uh, it's the only channel that gives you that immediate connection. It's also really personal. We tend to read our emails alone. I mean, it's just such a valuable tool. So if you're listening, regardless of your business, and you don't yet have an email list, that's definitely something to jump on. And certainly, you also mentioned Mark your lead magnet, which is how you get people to sign up. What was the process for developing that and how did you decide on that one well you know I just thought to myself well what what are the th common things that people are asking me all these years mm -hmm. right and then twisted that around like here's how to avoid the three fatal land buying mistakes I see investors making every single day well nobody right you know I could have phrased it another way where it's like here's how to make a lot of you know a great investment in land yeah but knowing the the psychology like Robert Cialdini of influence, right? Yeah, yeah. We're more risk averse human beings with our lizard brains than we yeah. are for the for the, the for the gains. Yeah. So I thought, well, let's go with how to avoid that risk. Yeah. So here's how to avoid the three fatal land buying mistakes. And then, you know, then we start with three, but really we're giving them ten. So from the very beginning of that relationship, we're always under promising and over delivering hmm. on everything that we do. Hmm. 
Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, that's fantastic. I think like, again, if every, every business should have an email list and every business should have a lead magnet. And if you don't have a lead magnet yet, all you need is to look through kind of your emails, look through the questions that you get and find what short term immediate problem can I solve for my potential customers and then put that into a PDF and, and use it as an exchange tool. Uh, the other beauty there, of course, with the email list and the benefit of having your website in that is that control aspect. Because again, yeah, we don't own Facebook. We don't own Craigslist. We don't own any of these channels. So we got to play by their rules and we've got to accept that one day they may not be there. So use them while the getting's good, but always have a plan B. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Excellent. So where is the land geek today? Where's the business at? Where is it heading for the future? So the land geek today is teaching people who have solo economic dependency how to get out of solo economic dependency. That means if they're not working, mm. they're not making any money. So a lot of my people are what I call high paid plumbers, yeah. right? Doctors, lawyers, dentists, um, you know, uh, professionals, uh, executives right and this is what you know the ultimate side hustle so you know we teach them step by step and we're their sherpa and how to you know look i've already made all the mistakes for them because i've been doing this forever yeah and how to avoid those those mistakes and how to move the needle in their lives with the goal being that their passive income exceeds their fixed expenses within 18 months hmm. of of working in this business so um that's really what the land geek is about is solving every single pain point that I've gone through in the business with software uh, and also with uh, virtual assistants. So we have people we, we've trained already to help you with the business and then software in the back end. Uh, I came up with a program called geekpay.io that automates collecting money. That's fantastic. So, that's so something that's, everyone that's, could use. That's the future. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's funny because like even like orthodontists could use this or plastic surgeons, anyone who's yeah. got like or lawyers, anyone who's got like a big amount of money that they're collecting and then yeah. they need to break it up into smaller payments. This gives total transparency to those customers. Um, you know you're getting paid because we have it up. We have it set up multi-tiered. So if the primary way of getting paid fails, mm. the secondary part goes through. And Excellent. so you can have multiple payment accounts. Um, it's really fun. Web-based. Perfect. And that's geekpay.io. I'll we'll make sure to link that geekpay. up in the show notes. Geekpay.io. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Well, Mark, I've got pages and pages of notes. I know my, my show notes writer is going to have a blast going through these. Uh, she's fantastic, fortunately, so we'll make sure to get all the links in there. Uh, is there anything that I didn't ask you that I should have? Um, no, I, I think you've done a good job, Adam. I think you've you brought the value. I, I hope you feel like, you know, you're too you kind. Some value. You're too kind. Yeah, absolutely. I've, like I said, I've got pages of notes, and I'm I'm gonna just uh, I'm gonna probably have to even scan these over. Fortunately, she's gonna go through it and and extract all the gems there, because yeah, you, you definitely gave us a lot of really good stuff that's going to apply to yeah, and obviously not just real estate investing, but business in general, marketing. I mean, there's a lot of really good nuggets here that people are going to benefit from. So I'm greatly appreciative. Yeah, I, mean, I do have a, a great marketing tip for you, Adam. Please, please. It's it's, a, it's my new favorite little little uh techie geeky tip oh lay it uh, on me have you checked out lumen5.com so haven't. i'll spell it for you yeah l-u-m-e-n the number five yeah dot com okay and what this will do because we know that video killed the radio star yeah this will take your blog post and using the the miracle of artificial intelligence create a video for you no and kidding. you can edit that video and it's amazing. Oh, and, it's, and you can't beat the price. It's free. It, well, I tell you, that is fantastic. I'm going to check that out literally as soon as we hang up here. I'm going to head over to lumen5.com and take a look because because that's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And another one for video is showbox.com. Showbox. An Perfect. Another free one. Uh, to make quick videos. Excellent. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's one thing we actually we were just talking with a client this morning who I was saying, like, we've really got to get a bit of video content. Obviously, the barriers to entry with video slightly higher than with some of the other media choices available. So people are slow to kind of adopt it. But that's where we're heading. That's the future. So, yeah, now's the time. All right. Perfect. So where can people learn more about you and contact you if they've got some questions, they want to hear a bit more? Um, I think the best place to go is thelandgeek.com. And um, if they mention that they heard me on 
your podcast. We'll give them for free the $97 passive income launch kit. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I'll make sure to link that up too and we'll have them, uh, have them contact you there. Perfect. Wonderful. Hey, Mark, well, a pleasure talking with you as usual here. Thanks so much for, for being on and for giving so much value here. Thanks, Adam. I hope it wasn't too disorienting watching me walk and talk. That's fantastic. No, I know. I feel like I need to start running in place just to keep up with you. Your Fitbit just just going to blast my numbers out of the out of the water here. So, no, no worries. No worries. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Mark. We'll talk to you soon there. Thanks, Adam. Appreciate Bye-bye. it. Bye-bye.